Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. First up I just want to say a massive thanks to my friend Alex from Switch Corner. I've been having problems capturing frame rates and he saved me with a piece of footage. Now thankfully I have fixed the issue so I've got a bit of my footage and I've also got some of his but yeah big thanks to him go and check out his channel. Today we're going to look at Man Eater predominantly focusing on the performance both in docked and handheld and as I've played and completed this one back on PlayStation I will also score it at the end. It was originally developed and published by Tripwire Interactive and has washed up on the shores of the PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PS5 and the Nintendo Switch. And I'm hoping that this review will help you when deciding where exactly is the best place to play this. Is it all washed up? Well, let's find out. The game runs on the Unreal Engine 4, which has seen many outings on the Nintendo Switch already. It seems to have varying degrees of success, but over the years they've made the process of porting Unreal Engine 4 games much easier, and I believe it includes a built-in compiler. Now that being said, it doesn't mean that every Unreal 4 engine game runs the same. And before we go into frame rates, let's have a look at the visual quality. In the earlier segments, it actually looks surprisingly good. And of particular note are the real-time reflections on the surface of the water. I initially thought these were simply maps that were unrelated to the scenery around them, but upon closer inspection certain key items are reflected in real-time in that surface which is quite impressive. It makes the water look far more appealing and seeing as you're going to be spending so much of your time in there, I was quite impressed. Now as you dip below the surface, the impressive lighting continues. This initial area has a haziness to it, which affords the game a little bit more performance headroom and its murky nature disguises some of the visual flaws in the title. You can look up and see the orangey light shining down through the greenish water and textures here look decent. I believe the game is using a dynamic resolution scaling technique so that when there is headroom, everything's looking much sharper. Some of the textures are really good, those of the other aquatic life and on some of the more common objects like crates that you have to collect. But in comparison to something like the PlayStation, you can see where they've saved on some performance with things like dynamic lights reflecting off your character. Most of those have been removed and predominantly replaced with more static light effects. If the whole game ran like this initial area then we'd have absolutely no problem and it would be a recommend, well potentially on a sale but we'll go into that. But unfortunately, performance does not hold up to this standard. Let's look at some of the frame rates. Now, while I haven't captured in this early area, it's definitely 30 FPS locked out almost consistently. But when we move into the next and much larger open area, that changes drastically. And most of the things I've discussed so far also change. Performance fluctuates much more wildly. When there's enemies on the screen and you're battling or dodging out of the way, you'll see it drop down quite noticeably. It seems to be worse when you're above the surface out in these larger areas and perhaps that's to do with the amount of reflective quality on that water. But when you dip below, it's definitely improved but there are the occasional stutters where performance will drop right down. The image quality also takes a large hit and that dynamic resolution scaling really begins to kick in. If you contrast that start area that we just looked at and this one, it almost feels like an entirely different game. It also could be in part to do with the different times of the day. It seems like in the daytime the game really struggles. Now I don't know if this is to do with more shadows being cast or something else to do with the lighting technique being used, but during the night scenes it seems much smoother and more consistent. There is a chance that the lower light levels actually trick the eye as well into thinking that the image quality is higher, but either way, to me, it seems to run better at these times. Shadow resolution will adapt to the distance you are from a surface, so as you move further away the actual resolution of those shadows will drop down, but it doesn't actually look too bad and when you're close to an edge it becomes nice and crisp without affecting the frame rate too badly. Other creatures' shadows can also be seen, but not so for foliage and many other objects in the world. While the sea creatures all look decent, the humans look terrible in this game. And they have very minimal animations. But I do like and still like the ragdoll implementation. Allowing you to fire them across the screen. 
or dive headlong onto their vessels. When we look at draw distance then, well, that's not very good. You can see quite clearly here in the near distance, the boat popping in and out of existence. And when there's many enemies after you, the combination of that low draw distance, a drop in frame rate, and then a dynamic resolution scale can make the game look quite ugly at times. I think as has been the case with quite a few recent titles, I prefer the game in handheld. Not only does the small size mask some of the issues, but I experienced a few less stutters in this mode. It still has them, and perhaps again the size has masked it, but it's just a bit more fun to play like this for me. Now while I've said a few negatives, overall I think they've done quite a good job with this port. This is patch version 1.01, .01, so I will be keeping my eye out for another patch. And when you factor in the cost aspect of this on Switch, I'm not entirely sure the value is there. Now, one area I am very impressed with is the audio. Exhibiting behavior more common to a thresher shark, this bull makes creative use of her powerful tail. The game carries a very comical narration that can be toggled on and off in the options menu, but the sound quality and the underwater ambience has all been carried over almost perfectly. With a set of headphones on, the game sounds great. And I actually think the audio score from composer Daniel James is one of the title's strongest aspects. Right now then, I'd give the visuals and performance 13 out of 20, and that audio is going to score 17 out of 20. So what's my experience of the Nintendo Switch version then in terms of gameplay and controls? Well, you take on initially the role of a baby shark by eating any creatures or destroying those of an equal or higher level. You'll gain chunks of meat that you can consume that essentially build up your XP and level up the shark, which eventually is going to raise it from a young baby to a pup, junior, and on to a full-on adult. And while this might sound intriguing and enjoyable, it soon becomes quite a tedious experience. It isn't helped by the mission structure. The game, in essence, is open world, split as it is into several different segments with many different tasks and objectives, but those tasks generally involve you moving to an area and annihilating all the creatures in it, or a set number usually shown at the top of the screen, and moving on to the next area. Sometimes if you kill too many humans, then they'll send a hunting party after you, and it's by killing these more powerful players that you can gain permanent character upgrades, but the combat is where the game is its weakest in my opinion. You can vaguely lock on to other enemies, but it feels quite floaty and losing that lock is quite common, and then you'll use the right trigger to chomp down on them. Once grabbed, you can wriggle and writhe and kill them more quickly that way, but combat doesn't progress further than button mashing and the occasional R bumper to dodge. It's not that it's poor, it just again becomes repetitive and a little bit tedious. I think the best way to play Man Eater is in small chunks of about 20 to 30 minutes, and if you play it like that, it can actually be really enjoyable, and strangely at times, quite relaxing. The controls themselves are decent, they've carried over nicely. You use the left stick to swim, and there are buttons which will make you breach the water, dive down low, increase your speed, and even do a tail whip or throw an enemy across the screen. Where I have an issue though, is with the lock on mechanic, it's just inconsistent and doesn't feel great. And when you speed past an enemy, often you'll find yourself wrestling the camera to face them again. It's just a tad flawed, especially in a game where you're going to have to be using it so much. It's saving grace really is the upgrade system. As you progress through the game, you'll gradually gain access to new upgrades and essentially mutations to your shark, so that by the end it'll have warped into a hideous beast, but will have all sorts of crazy powers. For me, the gameplay can be fun in short bursts, but it does grow a little bit dull. Gameplay scores 13 out of 20, and those controls score 15 out of 20. Where Maneater really lets me down on the Switch is in the price point they've gone for. Charging £40 for something that not only runs very poorly in certain areas, but is out on other platforms much more cheaply, and if I'm not mistaken, popped up on my Xbox Game Pass subscription, where you can play it completely free of charge, looking much, much nicer. And uh, did I mention completely free of charge? Well, obviously, if you've got that subscription, £40 makes no sense to me at all. Now, yes, I know some people say, oh, you shouldn't compare it to other platforms, but surely you have to look at that when you're looking at the value and cost. And £40, no, I would be waiting for a significant sale of at least 50%. 
If you're adamant that you want to play the game and you absolutely love it and you don't care about the performance issues, then by all means crack on. But for everyone else, do wait for a sale. Value scores 10 out of 20. Man Eater then is by no means a bad game and in small chunks can be a very fun one. But it has its flaws and on Switch, if I'm completely honest, it's not the nicest experience at times. I will say though that the handheld experience was a little bit more enjoyable and if you're a Switch Lite player and this is your only means of playing it, then it potentially is worth considering at some point down the line. It scores a Switch Up score of 68%. A big thanks to all of you who watch the channel, please do subscribe and hit all the positive buttons. And as always, a big thanks to our patrons because you guys support us each and every month. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya.